hello. How are you guys? I had to swap my screens here, so let me get this set up here. I had to run and get elastic because I had forgotten. My camera looks crooked, but is it? Yeah, look at that. That's so much better. <laughs> I feel bad for the people that are like, oh my god, the camera's crooked, you know? Like this right here, this looks crooked to me. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> there we go. All right, so, um, yeah, but see, seeing the edge of the table really can make it look really crooked, right? That's a little better. Hey, Barbara, how's it going? There we go. So today I'm sew sewing the um, pants number one by um, 100 Acts of Sewing. We made the dress number two on Thursday, and that turned out really great. A little short. Hey, Noemi, how's it going? Welcome. Happy Saturday. I'm Sarah Me, by the way. Um, right now, I'm finishing up quilting this piece of, of patchwork fabric that I made. I'm really hoping, <laughs> like, to, to, um, yeah, you know, you know. All right, wait. I was winding a bobbin, and I got a new one in there. All right. There we go. It's warm over here and I turned the air. So I am almost done with this uh, side of my pants and then I'm gonna quickly quilt the other side. I'm doing that with you guys because I mean, typically I, I don't do anything off camera um, to the garment. Like I'll, I'll get like my setup. Hey Terry, hey Patty, hi again. <laughs> And, um, I just try and do everything with you guys. There's sometimes I'll tell you, ooh, I'm going to change this, like, I'll, I'm going to fix this little, you know, bad sewing I did. But that's about it. I typically do everything on camera. I almost did this off camera, and I realized how fast this stream would be, because these pants are going to go together pretty quickly. I already removed the side seams since they're straight cut. So, um, there's no need for the side seam. And because of the patchwork, I figure, well, I'm not going to put a seam down the middle of one of these. Why not, right? So, hey, Derek, how's it going? I saw someone, um, post on Instagram, Judith Rosalind from Sew Over 50. She was saying how good you guys are doing over there. Like your numbers are low with the COVID thing. And I thought, wow, that's pretty awesome. I was jealous. California started off so good, and that's where we went wrong. <laughs> Everyone was like, oh, we're fine. <laughs> we're not fine. My area is actually becoming a little bit of a hot spot. What's rattling? Do you guys hear that? What's rattling? What's rattling? Is it loud for you guys? I'm gonna sew. Tell me what's rattling. Is it this? I think it's that. So how are you all doing? Are you guys sewing anything today? I was really careful pinning this and I can still see a little bit of buckling now that I'm getting towards the end. So I'm really hoping I didn't get anything off, you know? See, that's a little bit, of, a little bit buckling right there. So let's flatten that out. All of that's been stitched. See that? Hey, Elizabethan, how's it going? <laughs> what do you, what do you, do you make Elizabethan stuff? <laughs> or do you like it? Or was it just a fun name to have? I'm curious. Okay. That looks better. It looks, still looks like I'm on track, so that's good. I only have uh, this one and this one right here left, so, and then I'll switch to my other one. And I'm going to turn my air conditioner down, because apparently, look at that, it's kind of crooked, huh? Ooh, do I change that? That's on my butt. I won't ever see it. Like, I can be crooked on this color, but I can't really be crooked on that color, you know? It kind of bugs me. Is it bugging you guys? Hey, Penny. Ooh, hey, Sydney. Nice, Terry. 
Success is always such a good thing for motivation, isn't it? <laughs> That's how I felt about doing those um, shorts when I just took those elastic pants and turned them into the shorts. I was like, ooh, this is close and I need I need to do better, you know what I mean? And um, doing, doing the lighter weight fabric was great. I still like, I definitely did the like easiest waistband on that, but I don't think it was the best waistband. I was just trying to make it so that it was easy for other people to do. And I think if people didn't do a canvas, it would um, be drapier, you know? But that's what made me, it made me go, okay, I really wanna get this right, you know, so. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> that's awesome, I'll call you Elizabeth then. <laughs> oh, nice, Barbara. You have it at two today, so not yet, right? Soon. So you haven't gotten to see how they're doing yet. I'm just taking out, watch me find other sections of this that I'm like, ooh, that's not straight either. <laughs> but I think this one, even though I won't be seeing it, the back of my chair will see it. And you know, I like my chair, so. Let's see here. Oh, there's my air conditioning turning on, great. Get rid of the thread. All right, let me fix this. I, I did the whole thing even though the upper part was fine because I didn't want to, I didn't want to back stitch right there. Sometimes the uh, seam allowance underneath is what forces the needle, right? I was a little worried that I was gonna do it again because maybe it was the seam allowance pushing it around, so. Well, that's cool, Terry. Oh, the Montrose tea, awesome. I don't think I have that one, but I did buy one of their teas recently. But I can't remember which one. I really need to stop buying dress patterns. And I, I know I got the, the Linux shirt dress from Cashmerette and the Ames jeans, I'm pretty sure I got. I thought I got three patterns, but I can't think of what the third one is. I didn't count on that I need to still cut this out now. <laughs> Where'd that pin go? There it is. Cool. Let's get rid of that. I feel like something fell over here. No, it just moved around. Okay. All right. So we have this one. Um, let me see if there's any more pins. And so now it's all stitched down. A little lumpy. Not too bad. This fabric is so lightweight. I mean, look, you can see my fingers through that. So... What does it look like? What, Barbara? Oh, the Montrose. Isn't the Montrose, um, does it either have an asymmetrical hem or is it sleeveless? Pretty sure. I can't remember now. Oh, here's a pin. Here's a pin. Right there in the soft spot. All right, I'm just gonna tack this a little bit. Just like that. Let's just cut this. I didn't cut the perimeter, but I am going to serge these, I think, so um, I'll be able to clean up this edge a little bit. Yeah, right? And then those PDFs just kind of, you know, stack up, so yeah. Yeah, I know I'm doing a little bit of a hack job, but like I said, I'm gonna surge it. I set up my serger a little better angle for the camera. Yeah, it's, um, exactly, it's a woven. I know, right, Barbara? It's so nice to find woven shirts. T, you know, t-shirts, I mean, like knit is so much, is really comfortable, but I just like sewing with wovens. So I set up the serger. It's still up here on the ironing table, but um, 
I think it will be a better angle so that, you know, I don't cut into the garment. Like, who would do that with their serger? What a noob. Just for any of those of you who are new, I am not calling anyone noob has done that. I'm calling myself a, a noob because I did that on my Maya Soda stress right in the middle of the skirt, the front. It was a very dramatic YouTube moment. <laughs> But it all worked out. It turned out really great. I put a scene there. I saw someone tag me in an Instagram post of a gal who had just done something similar and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, I feel your pain. All right, here's my other one. This will just take a few minutes, probably 10, 15 minutes. And um, like I mentioned on the Instagram Live, I'm gonna be sewing the elastic in by surging it to the waist edge which means I'm also gonna have to cut off a little bit of the seam allowance. Um, it's my favorite way to wear elastic waist because it's flatter and um, the gathers are perfectly distributed. And it is a little bit nerve wracking, um, especially if we haven't done it before or you um, are new to surging. It can be a little bit harrowing. Oh, that's not a thread, that's the print. <laughs> I thought that was a thread. And, um, but once you get the hang of it, it's just such a great way because your elastic will never like, like turn inside the casing. Um, and, It'll just always lay flat. It's it's like flatter, so it's a little more flattering. I, I really love it. And um, I haven't really, I have never done it. Well, look at this buckling here, what the heck? Um, I haven't done it because we haven't done a lot of elastic waist anything. And it is a little bit, I don't wanna say advanced, it's just like, what the heck? I thought I did such a good job pinning this. Let's double check it. Let's double check it. Because there's no going back afterward. But the trick with doing the elastic um, in a serger is that when you're pulling the elastic, to attach it to the waist, you're only pulling when you're not sewing, and then when you're sewing, you keep it pulled, but you don't actively pull, because you can't put any tension against the needle. The needle can't be um, moved, you know? That's when you get into big time issues. Yeah, that's who it was, <laughs> right? That's, it was, uh, we, she and I talked a, a lot back and forth I really, and I, you know, I wanted to, I don't know if I ended up following her, but I wanted to. And um, now I, I can't find, because I pushed down, you know, I can't even see it. So it sounds like it all worked out and she had done it on the side so that it worked out. She had cut it wider so that even was a bonus. So, <laughs> oh, awesome, Terry. That's awesome. You'll get a lot of binding from a half yard. I think you get like five yards of binding from a half yard. Well, it depends on the width. It depends on the width. But like, if it's a little less than an inch and a half, in, one and a half inch wide, um, you should get like five yards. Oh, you should get more than a ha that than a half yard. You get five yards of that quarter. So if you don't want 10 yards of binding, you might only do a fat quarter. It just means more seams. You know, so if you don't want a lot of seams, then these are like literally the cat's pajamas, aren't they? Cat's pajama patchwork pants. Okay. So yeah, I cut these out by overlapping the front on the back and I got rid of the side seam because otherwise it would have just meant like, there would have been like maybe 
this one cut in half here and this one here, you know, like the patchwork would have been sewn together, kind of weird. That's why I kept it really even and I, I didn't have to do anything. Just so overlap it by the seam allowance. Do you think these will do the little scrunchy thing when they're washed, you know, like a quilt does? I guess quilters don't pre-wash their fabric often though, so maybe that's why that does that. Oh boy. Oh boy, don't look. I should have uh, disinvited all the quilters today. And invited you when I was past this point so that I'm not giving any of you, you know, <laughs> some serious anxiety. All right, so I can see that happen in there. The under fabric, since it's one piece, is going to be definitely a little bit of a different draping. And I didn't like plan which way my seams went. I kind of did that willy nilly. Um, and I just ironed, ironed it at home. And I just ironed it the direction that it was the least resistance. You know, like, you know, the Essex is a little heavier and it'll definitely push seams the way it wants to go. And same with some of the other fabric. So for the most part, I just followed what it wanted to do. It wasn't a big deal to me, it didn't really matter, so. You laughing at me, Sydney? Because I'm disinviting all the filters. I knew that would happen. Big stuff on the table. Always bad consequences with that. Oh, so you guys, my friend Brooke told me about the, you're not the quote police. <laughs> You're welcome here then. <laughs> um, I, my friend Brooke, you guys all know Brooke, she told me about Teachable. Has anyone here heard of Teachable? This might be a really good thing for me. I think I'm gonna try it out. Um, it'll be a way for me to offer sewing classes and then there's like even like, um, like chapters you can do of your videos. I can do quizzes and make you pass it, but I would never, never do that. Um, and um, it integrates with a uh, Zoom, so we can do that kind of thing afterward. Um, so yeah, I think that this might be a really good thing for me. I feel like I'd heard of Teachable, but I didn't know what it was and I've never seen an ad for it. And I've never been, um, I've never, run across anybody selling a class on there. But that's because you can actually integrate it with your current like website stuff and it looks like yours. It doesn't look like you're on a different platform called Teachable. So, I'm gonna look into that and try to figure it out. One more thing to learn. Eek. When I go to their site, I was discouraged at first because when I went to their site, I didn't see like a category for craft or sewing or anything like that. And I was like, are they not encouraging this? Is this a techie space? Is it being discouraged? You know, craft is often looked down upon in certain spaces. And when the fact is it's a skill, you know, there's a lot of skills involved. And we, we re, as humans, we rely on people having these skills, but we're out of touch with seeing them, right? Because people from faraway places are making all of our, you know, clothes and um, doing all of the menial labor in some areas, right? I'm being very general, I know, <laughs> but I'm very, very in touch with the exporting of domestic manufacturing because I came up in the garment uh, industry while that was happening and I worked in some of the last factories in California. There are still factories here, but I worked in some of the la some of the last big ones. And so um 
But then I started looking into Teachable more and I was like, okay, maybe I'm just not seeing these classes on their site because people are hosting their own classes. So they're not, so I don't really know, I don't really know how that works, but it might be a really good thing to try out. The, the only problem with it is that I really want um, captions to be available in the video in whatever language someone needs. And I think I have to pay for the pro plan for that. Um, and uh, that means it's like a minimum $100 a month for that. So it's like, you know, one more thing. But I think captions are absolutely essential and I, I wouldn't not have videos. And in, in fact, like there's captions available on YouTube and people have said they're, they're pretty good, so. I don't know how they are in another language, but. Just hacking my way around my pants. Don't mind me. I would normally just take these to my table and rotary knife around it and be much nicer. I would also probably stitch around the perimeter in a lot of cases, but um, I don't really feel the need to be that fastidious about this right now because I'm in a surgeon. So. <laughs> I'm really hacking these. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man. I'm a rotary knife gal. <laughs> Get all this excess fabric off. All right. Okay. Now we're ready to sew some pants. Who's ready? Okay, I got my scissors, I'm a steam ripper, and let's move these two things far away. So um, the first thing you probably do is you do your side seam. So you do your front to your back at the side and to make sure if this is your first time make wearing pants that you don't do your two fronts together along that long side seam. Um, make sure you take one front and one back. And when you put them right sides together along the side seam, which is gonna be right here, right? These two curves should look different from one another and you'll know you have a front and a back. If your fabric also doesn't have a right or wrong side or it's really hard to tell make sure you get a left and a right so that you don't have two left pants or two right sides of your pants i say this because it's legit easy mistakes to make the first time you're making pants making pants is actually really easy because it's you know you have a side like the drawstring pant or uh, elastic pants you have a side seam an inseam a rise so you only have three seams and then you have your waist and your hem. So that's pretty, pretty quick. I used to whip these out. Once I got the hang of pants when I was first learning to sew, I'd whip out a pair, you know, like if I needed them and out of whatever fabric I could find. So yes, Barbara, I have. Yeah, I have. You've seen me sew a few things of their fabric. I really love their fabric. It is, it's a, it's a nice um, poplin. You know, if you're going to use it, um, like it might be lightweight for like a pencil skirt. You couldn't wear it for that, but you could wear, you could use, you know, probably quilting cotton for a pencil skirt. It's crisper and tight, more tightly woven and smoother and thinner. It's really nice. I'm trying, I'm trying to think what I know for sure you've seen me make that was in the art gallery poplin. I don't even think I have any here. Are any of these art gallery? Probably not. These are definitely not their style of print. <laughs> All right, so um, once you have your side seam together, um, you're going to now do your inseam here. Your inseam is this one that goes from the curve down to the hem. Now I'm gonna sew it on my machine first and then I'm gonna serge it. I like that I think it looks cleaner yeah a, a shirt or a dress would be great yeah so it's going to it's not drapey drapey but it's it's like um perfect for a shirt 
and perfect for a dress that um, I think an address yeah I think they're really great options for that like if you're going to do one of those like like the Charlie Kaftan would probably be meh you know with the Charlie Kaftan I'm trying to give you a good example because the Charlie Kaftan is so great in a drapey fabric if you did this short Charlie Kaftan I think the the art gallery fabric would be nice um, but yeah, so something that's not incredibly drapey shirt would be awesome in it, especially because quilting cotton in the shirt is a little heavy, depending on how the shirt fits. It's got to fit really good. Works though, you know? All right, so I'm going to focus on lining up the actual fab, not this white lining, since, you know, I kind of hacked that. I like doing the seam and then the serging because doing just the serging on woven seems a little bit cheap. I don't know how else to put it. It just seems kind of cheap to do that. Um, it makes a really narrow seam allowance and typically in your woven garments, you want a wider seam allowance than a quarter of an inch, which is what it would be like if it was a serger. So I'm just taking a second to look, make sure I have those two layers lined up and then I'm following the seam allowance on that, not the white stuff that I used a chainsaw to cut. Ooh, that seam was a little thick, eh? All right, and then when I go use the serger, I can clean all this up here. All right, so we have one. And then we have our other. Yeah, and quilters love the art gallery cotton as a quilt because it does make a really nice feeling quilt, you know? I wonder what quilting cotton was called before it was called quilting cotton. Do you think it was called calico? You know how sometimes people would refer to fabric as calico and not um, and not because of the print. We need a uh, fabric historian. Going along this seam with all the um, vertical or horizontal seams of the patchwork uh, is definitely it's a bit much. And like I'm going through a seam right there. All right, so now we have our inseam. So we're gonna sew the inseam together first, or serge that first, and then I'll do the rise. So let's go to the iron, which I think you can see pretty good. I put white thread on, not cream. Look at me moving up in the world. Oh, I haven't threaded. Oh, yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. So I'm using a four thread serger. And the way my four thread is currently set up, you can see that there's a line of stitching down the middle and one there. Um, if I and so it does have the seam on it right now, but I could set it up with the a seam to the left of the serging. I think that's a much better way to seam your garments with um, a serger if you're doing wovens. So in other words, this is basically, this will work for knits, right? This does have the seam in it. So you can do a three thread serger and a three thread serger isn't, doesn't have a seam. If you do four thread and five thread, then you're usually talking about serging that has a seam with the overcasting. This one right here has it all in one and in this space, but there is a way to do it, especially five thread, where you can put the seam right here and it's about a small eighth of an inch away from the serging. And I think if you're using wovens and you don't wanna do this step first, that's the stitch you want. It gives you a little bit more seam allowance um, and then that way if there's ever any issues and you need to take it out, you have a little bit more to work with. So 
that all it also goes for me like if you're going to buy a serger and you're trying to decide if you should do a three or a four thread I say four thread depending on if it has that seam stitch um, I think you should try and get a serger if you can afford it that has at least the capability of having a seam so that it's a one and done type of sewing you're not just trying to overlock the edges and you want to seam your knits and your garments um, without having to go back and sew it on your regular machine. That was really confusing. There was a stitch there and I was like, what is that? That was the uh, seaming of the patchwork. All right. Yeah, right, Barbara? I'm wondering if it was synonymous with muslin. You know what I'm talking about, right? Maybe it's just uh, something I saw in movies and it's not accurate. It's not like I lived then <laughs> to know what they actually called it. <laughs> but, you know, they would say, oh, we went to the store to get a, a, a few lengths of calico, right? All right, so now turn one leg right side out and stick it in. And it should, the curves should line up if you have done both of your pants. Um, you have a left and a right. This is when you really know. If you're like trying to put it together and you have one really long curve to one really short curve, then one of your legs, you have two right legs <laughs> or, two, or two left legs. All right, so here we go. See, here's, um, this is my front. Here's my seam. And I like to offset this seam right here. In jeans, we're talking, we do something a little differently, but in something like this, I'm just going to offset it so the bulk is less there. These are already going to be kind of, they're not heavy, but they're not lightweight. You know, I've got two layers of fabric and all these seams, so, you know. I did not uh, sew my patchwork so that seams match, so I don't have to worry about that. I just need, I just want to match my crotch seam right here, and that's about it. And try not to pull on this because it is a little bit on the bias. And if I'm going too fast for anybody, because I know that these are really great for beginners, I'm always telling people to use these as great beginning patterns. If there's any beginners here who want more instruction, please tell me. If you guys aren't saying anything, I just, I, I kind of speed up because I worry people are like, oh, I know all this. You know what I mean? It's just the nerves of a reality sewist <laughs> to take over. Yeah, me too, Allison. My, da my daughter, my sister is named for Laura. <laughs> when my mom was uh, pregnant, she was, uh, she was remarried and I was about 12 and, um, she was pregnant and she was, I think, really convinced she was going to have a boy. And so she told my stepdad, you can pick the girl name and I'll pick the boy name. And um, he started really stressing about it and all the things he came up with. She was all, uh-uh. And then he was like, and she was obsessively watching Little House on the Prairie. This was the 80s. And um, he was like, well, maybe I'll try Laura. And so... She went for that, and that's how. And I got to name my sister's middle name. <laughs> and then um, she finally did get her boy, and she got to use her boy name. <laughs> and and she really wanted a very um, Western name, so his name's Brett Lloyd. <laughs> oh, okay. The ends fray and loch. The other was usually called broadcloth. That makes sense, but broadcloth is so smooth. I think of broadcloth as being um, smooth and great for lining. Am I wrong about that? Ah, oh, really, Michelle? Yeah, so that sounds simpler than mine. Mine has the capability of having like eight cones of thread. I have never used more than five. <laughs> I don't know, because it, it does these decorative wave stitches. I only have it because I, it would do the um, cover stitch and serging. Okay. 
Interesting. Interesting. Ooh, I love this. Um, I, I like that yours is, yeah, and see my needle, same thing, but I have to move my, I have, to, I have four needles, five possible needle spots, and I have to use the left hand needles, so. Well, how did you do it, Derek? Right? <laughs> it does get wacky. I hate it when people pick it apart and they're like, there was no peanut butter back then. I'm like, come on. <laughs> we didn't have Google either when that was being made. <laughs> but I understand that. You know, I love how on Big Bang Theory, Amy is such a huge fan of Little House in the Prairie. It's so cute. Okay, um, I'm going to search this. Uh, what am I looking for? Iron. That camera is called Iron right now. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna do the same thing I just did. And you know, I could trim off more if I wanted, but um, I don't feel the need. I already have my seam line in there and this gives me options if I ever needed to open it up, which I don't think I will because they're loose. And nobody likes removing surging, so you should check the fit before you do the surging. These are looking kind of Pillowy, aren't they? My machine doesn't mind thicknesses, but um, because this little guy is a little bit loose, what happens is um, it won't trim it and it'll get sucked back in there on the thicknesses. Because this isn't pushing against there. It's not keep making a seal. of bloomers. It's a lot of bloomers, Derek. <laughs> well, um, Sydney, what's the first thing that pops into your head when you think about your options? First thing. Don't think about it. All right, so I'm going to look at my pants here. These are looking like kind of, I don't know, like I'd walk in the moon on the end if they're inside out. All right, so which one's my front? This is my, so you can always tell, like say you um, line up your crotch right here, the, the inseam right here. The lower one is your front. It's always your front unless you've made some fit modifications um, and you've raised this up or lowered your back, okay? So the shorter one is always your front, just so you know. And then um, I, think I'm, I think I need to add more labels over here. I don't have one. And I think I definitely am going to get one because if you don't have a label, I 1 million percent, like get a piece of ribbon, get a piece of fabric, even if you take a piece of um, fabric, okay, and then cut it on the bias, right? I don't care what you use. Do this, do this, cut it on the bias like this. Nicer. <laughs> Not with a chainsaw. And then just cut it like a little piece of ribbon like this, fold it and put it in the back of your pants. Okay. This won't unravel. It's really lightweight. You won't feel it. It won't be scratchy. The edges are totally soft. If you have a kid who has a label thing, cause I've known kids that have, um, like serious anti-label stuff. Um, this is a, a, can be a possible workaround for that cause it's super soft and you can't feel it. Um, cause there's no finishing or anything and it won't unravel because it's on the bias. So yeah. Yeah. See Michelle, right. Yeah. I never really fact checked what they said either. The peanut butter wouldn't have been a thing, but peanuts probably would have been, I mean, like where were nuts grown? Like, you know, where are they native? More Pietras, but you don't have fabric yet. Okay. Tank tops are not that are not double brush poly. All right. What if you didn't sew something? What if you prepped something? Oh, how cute. See, I, yeah, I wonder how you did it. I do think like it can be a little bit like 
like the pants are everywhere, you know, when if you just don't stick the whole leg in there. Hey, Eliza. Cool. Yeah, and always with aqua ribbon. Yeah, see, I've had I've had ribbon like that too, where I always used the same ribbon. Some ribbons can be kind of scratchy, but um, the bias is great. If you don't have anything, you don't want to get up because your show is so good, you don't want to move from your sewing machine. <laughs> I get it. All right, I'm gonna go run and go grab a label. Uh, I meant to replenish them, so I know the back because you know the back. go through these way faster than I, I think I'm going to, you know? I have this little um, cup that I put them in here. I have this twill tape. I don't know where it came from. What was this from, you guys? It was something we did. Was it in one of my needle sharp boxes, maybe? What is this from? stiff. All right. So one thing we didn't add to these pants is, is pockets. What'd you miss? Pants are going good. I already have them together. I quilted them. Quilted. Um, and um, I sewed the inseams first and then I did the rise and now we're to the point where um, I should probably just slip them on and see where they end up on my waist, if you guys don't mind me going off the side and doing that, because once I, this is the one thing, like, I'm going to do the um, the type, type of elastic I'm gonna install, Eliza, is the kind where you surge it onto the waistband. So I wanna make sure that these are the right size, because that's one thing. It is a pain in the butt to remove um, if you have it in the wrong spot. So if there's a, I think, um, I want to say there's an inch and a half. I was a little confused. Let me see. By the waist amount here. Quarter. Yeah, so there's an inch and a half seam allowance. Hem allowance. Waist casing allowance. There you go, Sydney. See, like, I feel like doing that kind of thing where you don't know what to do, Sydney. Like, like do something like pay it forward to yourself, you know? Like, okay, I have these couple of patterns to tape together, and then by, probably by the time you're done with one of those, you're gonna be like, I know what I wanna do. So, yeah, look, Terry does the same thing. Cool, all right, so let me just throw these on. I'm a, I have a dress on, I can just pull them up real quick. Just real quick. Entertain yourselves, you know. Oh, I was gonna do a slit on the side. Ooh, these are gonna be comfy. Okay. I think I promised you guys a, a leg slip. But I realized too that I can't really do that with the way I, I got rid of the side seam. All right, this is where I want my pants to finish. Right there. So I'm going to, um, so whatever with elastic you're doing, make sure this is pretty straight. Can be a little different. Looks like there's a little bit of an angle, so we'll be able to like smooth that out right there. See that? That makes kind of sense for me. Um, Whatever width elastic you're doing, you want this fold over amount to be the width of your elastic exactly. It doesn't really have to be, um, you don't have anything extra. I mean, you can add maybe an eighth of an inch for the width of the elastic, the thickness, if you really want to get, you know, picky. So. <laughs> oh, do they, Sydney? Aw. 
Sydney, here's my tip with pets. Train them where you want them to sleep. Like every time you see them, like put down the same few things, like a little quilt or whatever, the poof or whatever. And then eventually every time you put that, even if you like have to go to the next room, go get it, bring it in, lay it down, go, oh, here you go. You know, <laughs> they'll start just like doing that. It's worked a charm with all my pets. They love the little quilts I made. I call them pet mats. And the poof, of, I can put the poof anywhere and Loki just climbs right on top. Thank goodness. I don't have a ruler over here. Oh yeah, I do. So, um, I think I have my Choco liner here, right? Oh, I have this wax. I have this ancient piece of, um, it's like a crayon. Oh, here it is. It's right where it's supposed to be. Oh, I also have the, um, let's use Nancy, Nancy's trick of using these uh, ultra washable markers. So I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna draw right on here. Like this. They really make putting the cap on pins hard for kids on this one. Oh, I have some, um, I have like, well, I mean, it's, it's very much, <laughs> I have something to show you guys, but it, it's definitely my own ego. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. I mean, they won't, right? They won't. <laughs> The other day, so, okay, so Senor, my cat, if you're new here, my cat had, uh, he is being treated for bronchitis. He's lost tons of weight. He's finally get, got in the diagnosis. And then he got this huge abscess because he was on steroids, which made him susceptible um, to every little scratch turning into a big old fat, you know, infection. He's doing really good. He's gained a tenth of a pound. And um, he, the day he got back from the vet again, he's been twice this week. No, they couldn't, Michael and Cricket couldn't find him anywhere, like anywhere. They looked everywhere and I'm here and I'm like, why are you guys telling me this? Cause this is going to stress me out. You guys are going to make me worry. They finally sent a picture where they found him and it was these two little black ears behind all the books in this bookcase. You remember our house is new to us. So we're still learning all the little spots and the pets are too. They're learning their spots where they like to be. And so they sent a picture and, his, and he had just probably lifted his head up and that's why Cricket saw his little ears. He was in my husband's office the entire time, like when he was on meetings with people. They, his coworkers probably saw the cat go into the bookcase, you know? So it's pretty funny. All right, let me cut this. I'm just gonna cut those right off. And then um, I suggest like once you go through the seam right here at the front and the back, Backstitch that again because we are going to be pulling on this waist and your side seams too. We're going to be pulling on the waist a little bit when it goes through the serger. We're not technically supposed to be, but it'll happen. <laughs> oh, really? That's funny. I have that um, Linux shirt dress and I really want to make it. Now that I'm in their size range, I'm excited. I'm gonna save this amount that I'm cutting off too because I can just cut this off my pattern over there and then I'll know how much to cut off my pattern for future pants and I don't have to worry about it. Okay, this is the front. All right, so where I started, what is the front? So I'm just gonna save this. I'll just draw it on there. Center back, all right. All right, and the hem was good. So let's just look and see. Oh, I need a back stitch. Right, Sydney? Well, and they love to be like, um, oh man. They like to be like, ooh, can I get into this little spot? You know? 
Senor was doing this weird thing when he had that cone on where he would walk around the house. Like, he has the cone on like this, right? And he, he usually just walks around like a normal being. But with the cone on, he would go against the wall. So here's the wall, and he would go against it and walk with the cone smashed up against the wall. <laughs> so he, he wasn't stealthy at all. We could hear him wherever he was because he was mashed up against the wall with the cone. I don't know if he was trying to get it off, if he was trying to um, scratch himself. I could not figure it out. And I'd be like, buddy, are you okay? And so I'd kind of write him and um, and then he would kind of just walk normal. But it was kind of funny. All right, I'm doing my back stitch again. There we go. I just saw a comment pop, pop up on my phone. And just in case, um, Ricky, are you, if you're watching live, you're, you're commenting. And how do I describe that, you guys? You're commenting in the comment section, not on the live chat. And if you want to be in the live chat, there should be like this microscopic little spot where it says show chat or hide chat. And it's gray. And that's where you click. And then the chat will open up and you can, you can speak in there. Just in case you're not. Hopefully it's this video that you commented on. Yeah, right, Elizabeth? Yeah. I know, it's so weird. He would do it everywhere. So he would be walking down the stairs with his face mashed against the wall or he'd go into a room and like it would be catching on all the little like the trim of the door, every doorway and he'd get stuck and then he'd be like this, you know. <laughs> Usually he's the smartest pet in my house, you know, so. All right, so um, I'm just going to hem these because they were good. Must start on the inseam. Yeah, there we go. Just gonna do a little rolled hem. They're thick enough, you know. Look how thick that is. Yikes. I also, you know, maybe actually I could just surge and hem them. I don't want, I, I wanted more of this solid to be on the pants, you know. It really doesn't have the impact I'd hoped for. I would have liked it to have been like maybe up to here, like double the, the t you know, the depth. So I know Eliza, right? He looks so much better though. He's like um, much perkier, feeling better. Really hope that this, he kind of just kicks this infection and starts gaining weight, you know? Um, this is um, cotton lining I got on the Stone Mountain and Daughter site. At the last second, I was like, wait, I wonder if they have lining. And then I found their lining section. And I almost got some of the Rayon Bemberg that I've been using because I got that from Hearts, and I really like that. Um, but then uh, I was like, ooh, what if they have a cotton? And they do. It's very lightweight. You wouldn't use it for anything but lining or maybe um, sleepwear. You know, like if you wanted a really lightweight camisole or something like that or, or a slip. And I just got, I think I got like five yards. It's really affordable. And now I just have it on hand. I didn't know I'd be using it for these pants. So it just I just lucked out that I had it on hand. Because I, I don't know what I would have lined these with otherwise, Eliza. You know? Because I didn't plan on this. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. I pushed this inseam that way. Yeah. So I like to push the seam towards the back. But look at this. See how this is the seam of the patchwork is right there? Can you guys see that? So there's a seam going up to the inseam. So I'm actually going to have to press it that way. That's okay. Why force it? It'll just want to do that while you're wearing it anyway, and it'll feel twisted. Yeah, like a batiste, but lighter. It feels a little lighter. Maybe I was thinking of broadcloth earlier as a batiste, but... I always thought broadcloth was a little lighter and smoother. I always 
liked um, the broadcloth and, and batiste sections of fabric stores because it would be like the only place you saw like a rainbow of solid colors, you know? The fabric store I worked at in Humboldt County, um, Fabric Temptations, she had this whole corner just of broadcloth and batiste in there. Every possible color. I loved it. Isn't Batiste polyester though? Am I wrong about that? Because this is cotton. Alright, let's do the fun part now. Um, I'm gonna, I've already trimmed my waist, um, so I know that's nice. It's not the hack job I did on the rest of these. So we're good. Let me. Put my elastic on. I'm just going to put it around my waist where these pants are going to sit. And I'm going to make it a little bit tight. So this is my waist. So I'm making it probably three or four inches smaller. And I'm doing that because this, usually what you would do with your waist is do it about two inches smaller than where it's going to sew. That depends on what kind of elastic you're using. If you're using an elastic that stretches really easily, like some of those knitted elastics, um, I would cut off a little bit more than two inches because that won't hold up to the fabric. It'll stay stretched out, you know? Um, the bra I like braided elastic. It's, I use it most of the time for things. I'm going to give myself a little a bit of overlap. Um, and it is strong and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't fold and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Okay, Patty, yeah. Wow, really, Sydney? That's odd. Hi, Karen, how's it going? Four sizes more on the hips on the spring, but wow. Really? Dang. So, um, because we're going to at attach this directly to the pants, right? We're going to be stretching the elastic as we attach it. Because this is a little bit thicker, this can win the fight over who's staying stretched out, right? So you want the elastic to win the fight. And um, that's why I cut it a little bit smaller. Now, if you do it too small, what will happen is, like you wanna get it as, as right as possible. Don't just be like, oh, I'll just make it a little smaller air on the side of caution. You don't want it to be too much smaller so that what happens is if they're a little too small when you're wearing them, your pants are gonna try and go to the smallest part on your body and then that's where you're gonna get wedgie pants, right? It's gonna pull your pants up to that smallest spot. All right, so um, this part's pretty important. You're gonna sew your elastic in a loop and make sure it's not twisted and really sew it. Like I'm gonna do back stitch there and here. Cause we're gonna be pulling the heck out of it, right? All right, and so the next thing you're gonna do, and this is pretty important, um, I'm gonna do maybe with the um, marker because I want to promote not using pins near your serger. Hmm. I wonder, Sydney, maybe you should look on their website about fitting for that pattern. Maybe they've had some folks talk about that. That's a lot. It's not impossible, though. Especially if you're already really good at doing two sizes. Because the difference between, their sizes are numbered, right? Not lettered. So, um... All right, let's talk about this for a second, Sydney. So when you say most patterns, it's usually two sizes different. Are those lettered sizes like S, M, L, XL? And cashmere has numbered sizing, correct? Like two, four, six, eight, or 12, 14, 16, 18, and stuff like that, right? Correct me if I'm wrong though. Cause I know that I, you're actually, if that's the case, you're fine. It's exactly the same. Because lettered sizes are two sizes in one. And 
numbered sizes has a smaller difference between them than lettered sizes. So if you were to look at a small, medium, and large, you know, the small to the medium would be like an inch and a half different or two inches different. Whereas in numbered sizes, it's usually one inch different. So it's, you know, when you, when you couple lettered sizing, because it's more general, it doubles the size difference. Oh, okay. So I'm, okay. So maybe that's not the case. Oh, it's like colors, not size. Hmm. All right. So get that brand that you know really well and see what um, inch difference is between the sizes. And then look at the inch difference between your cashmere. You know what I mean? Or, or just look at the difference in sizes that you are. Because if you're four inches on one and four inches on the other, you're in the same boat. Yeah. Go by num go by your inches rather than the sizes. Maybe it might it might help be more like okay, apples to apples. You know. Okay. Okay. So this next part is um, we're going to divide our waist. I like four sections. Um, I feel like four sections is manageable because I only have to deal with like this amount of space in my searcher. And um, this is where, you know, your nerves are going to get a little bit shaky if you haven't done this before. But I'm telling you, this is such a great way to put elastic onto the waist. So if you can, you can try it out, I think you might like it. So we have our center here, right? You're going to go by the seam, right? Center and center. I got to make sure I remember to do my label after all that. Let's see. I will, I will do it. I'm just going to pin it here. So I remember to do it. Um, so line up your seam there, right? And now this is your halfway point between here and here. So you can either notch it like this, you know, like go snip or snip. But I don't recommend that since we're surging and um, it, you can do that. You just can't do it too deep, you know. So it is a nice visual. So I'll just show you. If you do something like this, you can see that little triangle. It's a nice visual. You're not using pins. You're going to surge over that. And as long as that can fit in the surging, you're, you're good to go. Um, I have done pins in the past many times. But I think if this is your first time doing this, I don't recommend that. I would um, mark this with a pin or something like that. And you want to do it on the wrong side. And you want to make sure you can see this on the wrong side. Okay. So now you're going to do the same thing to your elastic. So figure out what you're going to consider the center here of your overlap, right? Is it, um, is it right here? Is it in, the, in between the two rows of stitching? Um, just make sure you're consistent, right? So we'll, I'll say for me... I'll do it in between the rows of stitching. That way I'm not confused. Like, oh, I'll do this edge and then I'm in there and I'm like, oh, was it this edge or that edge? You know? Okay. So we're going to do the center and we're going to do the center over here and you can't clip your elastic. Okay. So you could clover clip it or um, if you want to chalk it. Yeah, let's do that. We'll chalk it. You can use white or yellow or whatever. If you're using white elastic, it won't be a big deal. You know, you can just use a pen. And now you need the other one. And so the way I always find this is I put this one on top of that one like that. And then I know this one. And I know this one. All right. So now we have our elastic in four sections and our pants. And like, this is all I have to stretch it. It's really not that much. It's the perfect amount. So now if you're doing this and there's not a whole lot of gathers, like like if you did this on the free range slacks, um, the free range slacks, the weight, why those are so flattering for being a pull on pant is that there's not a lot of gathers. So it um, means that you're not actually going to have to stretch your elastic very much. There are other pants patterns or skirt patterns or whatever that the stretching is a little too much for doing an elastic waist. And... 
there's been a couple of times where I've pre-gathered it a little bit when I found that out and it was a little messy. <laughs> so just kind of look at it, you know, gauge like this, this elastics, you know, this is going to stretch much further than this pair of pants. Okay. All right. So your next thing you're going to do is you're going to serge it on. So um, decide which way you're pressing your seams here. Do this. And then um, I put the this at the back. And I usually start at the back. All right. So you want to make sure you put your elastic inside. And make sure you don't do this. This is a classic error. If you start your surging like this, okay, does anyone know what's wrong with this? I'm going to give you a second because this is a really important thing. <laughs> so the way I'm holding this has the elastic right there. And what will happen is if you do that and you start surging and you're going around, you're basically like going to get yourself into a point where you're going to have to stop, get, get off of the fabric and start again. You need this elastic to be all over here to the left. Okay. So make sure that it's inside the pant here. Now, sergers also don't have a free arm typically. They can, I know they do, but almost always it's a bed like my machine is here, right? A free arm is when you have a, like a narrow um, bed of your machine and then something can go around the machine as you're sewing, right? Like a home machine is a great example of that. If your home machine is sitting up on your table and you have a really narrow, um, bed, you can even do a sleeve, right? You don't have to turn it inside out. Like I'm always doing this, right? I always have my garment all up on top of my surface. And I always sew from the inside of the garment. Whereas a lot of you probably sew like this from the outside of the garment, because it can go around the bed of your machine. Well, sewing on a serger is a lot like sewing on the industrial. So all of your garment sits on top of this bed and it can't wrap around the, the machine at all. So you got to prepare yourself for that. And you need to make sure that everything is on top and to the left, right? Cause you're going to be sewing like this, you know, all the way around like that. And if you start over here like this and you go around, what will end up happening is you can't get past a certain point. It'll get really bad. <laughs> I've done it before. So, let me make the errors and then I'll tell you how not to do that again. Okay. All right. So again, put your center there and then we're going to go do it. And so while I'm sewing, this is what I'm going to be doing because the angle of seeing how, what I'm doing is a little tricky because I don't have a machine dedicated on a camera, but you're going to be able to see what I'm doing pretty good. What I'm going to be doing is lining up, you know, this, here, let's flip this over so I can see my, my chalk right there. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to put this on top of that mark, right? I got these two marks. Once I get this started in the machine and I'm going to pull this and I'm going to sew it, right? So I'm holding it. Sorry, it's like curling. I'm holding it like this. I'm not pulling it as it's sewing. You're not pulling it as it's sewing because then you might bend your needle. And anytime you bend your needle, it will not be going down into the machine at the proper angle and it might snap um, or it might throw the timing off in your machine. You can break your machine. Just straight up I'm telling you that, that you don't want to do that. So just make sure that you are already stretching. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in my machine like this. So, and then I'm going to arrange it. I'm not going to sew for very far because I really want to stretch it as much as possible. And this part right here may end up being a little flat. I mean, honestly, I think a better solution for my pair of pants, because this is kind of thick and this is kind of thick, is to put this thinner section right here and then put my back right here. It doesn't matter. It's not going to be uncomfortable because this is going to be all inside, right? So let's do that. So I'll start like this. I'm going to get it, the machine on there and then I'm going to start stretching. I'm going to hold it and then I'm going to keep sewing. So that's what you're going to watch. All right. You guys ready? I'm really doing a lot of lead up for this, aren't I? <laughs> All right. 
So uh, hopefully too, you have like a table over here. I don't, I'm standing here, it's really awkward. Um, and I say get everything ready before you start. And you know, practice if you want to, like get a piece of fabric and practice. All right, so I'm gonna, I always kind of go at an angle like this. I don't cut anything. Once my serger is on fully, and it is now, now I'm gonna start arranging it, right? So here we go. I'm gonna put this in the middle there. And I also hold right here, so I'm making sure I'm not pulling again. So now I'm stretching it like this, right? Take a break, let it go, and then I pull it again. Now it's going. All right, now we're gonna get to our next one. Right here. I think I want this to go this way, if I want it to stay the same. So here we go. And I make sure this gets right onto that center. All right, now I'm gonna pull this. And I kind of pull this down if I need that to line up because sometimes your waist is at a bit of a curve, right? So that was my thickness. You, you saw my machine hesitate a little. All right, so let's like, get this on top of that. Now we can arrange our next section. Easy peasy, right? Where is it? Oh, right here, it's this uh, little notch right here. All right, so. And just hold this, and don't let it go. Stretch, go. Get just to that spot. You can see that that's a, the amount it needs to stretch right there, right? All right, and now your last little section. Got fully stretched out. This is easy, right? It's already uh, secure for me, which is really nice. Get my tail in there so I can trim it off. And then I always push this and get go off as much of a right angle, you know, as possible. Mainly so I don't accidentally cut these threads with my knife because the knife sits so far in front, like a full half inch or more in front of my needles. So the knife gets there before the needles do and I don't want to accidentally cut those threads. All right, good job. <laughs> Not bad, right? What'd you guys think? <laughs> All right, and so now the next part's the magic. So let's see, I'm gonna kind of tighten that up a little bit. I'm gonna stick that under there when I go to stitch it down. So now um, we have one more stitch left and our pants are done. You're gonna do kind of the exact same thing, but um, it'll be a little easier because um, well, my stitch was a little messy. It's probably because of doing the elastic. Yeah, awesome, Derek. Oh, I bet that was so handy. Did you use like narrow elastic? There's some surgeries have like um, feet or settings for attaching elastic. All right, so we're just gonna fold this directly over. I'm gonna stick my label in there and we're gonna top stitch it down. Now I feel like you can do this without pinning anything. So, um, but if you need to, go ahead. I'm gonna center my label over the seam allowance because I think it visually on the inside looks better. My stitch was a little bit marginal. All right, so now this is the same thing, but you the elastic knows where it wants to go now, so you don't really have to stretch very much. You just need to keep it nice and smooth and taut while you're sewing. And remember, you're not pulling against your needle. You're keeping it stretched while you sew, and then it'll scrunch up back there. And I like to make sure like I pull this down like this so this is nice and smooth. Just like this. Make sure you fold this the same direction it is in there. 
I am pulling this like this. I want this nice and smooth right here. And it's kind of, you, you want to look for where you started. Sometimes it's a little hard to see because um, of the surging stitches. But, oh, I got it. Okay, cool. And that's it. They're done. And it looks really nice. I mean, I, I admit, like, doing um, inch and a half wide would probably look a little bit nicer as far as, like, the finish of, of pull and pants go. You made it for the big reveal. I think we're a theater company. Yeah. He said he did 20 um, bloomers for or Little Orphan Annie. <laughs> All right, that's it. They're done. They're done. No pockets, though. No pockets. This is so, it's funny because I can't believe I didn't put pockets on here because normally I would have been like, all right, and here's how you add pockets. I might, I might do like some patch pockets, but you should do that before you um, sew the pants together. I would do your side seam if you want patch pockets first. And then um, if you want inseam pockets, we add, we've we added those to lots of pro projects, so you can kind of check that out. Um, like especially on the dress number two, we added inseam pockets, so if you want to check that out. I do it, yeah, I mean, I don't want it to be too high up. Like here it's a little high up. I think um, doing it at the bottom is nice because it le doesn't leave a lip. But the elastic's stiff enough that it's not such a big deal. It lays flat. See that? And you, you know, and you want to make sure when you're stretching it and sewing it, you're getting it pretty straight on. You can see there's a tiny bit of an angle there. But I, don't, I think it's okay. It could be a little bit more straight up and down. I think that um, these could be, these pants aren't very full. So if they were fuller, it would look even more scrunched up, you know? And then, you know, it's hard to tell the front from the back, right? So it's good we have this, um, oh, did I put the, did I put the label on the wrong side? Oh, I think I did. You guys. <laughs> I did. How did I do that? Oh my God. Easy peasy, but make sure you keep the front straight from the back. Why do I think this was my back? Shoot. I mean, you know, as long as you know which which is which, right? <laughs> it wouldn't be a stream without a dumb mistake. Oh, I forgot I want to show you my bags I made. Because I think they turned out so great. I don't like taking out stitches near surging. I'm always scared I'm going to clip the surging stitch. So I do it this way. I am a professional. All those patchwork seams, right, Elizabeth? Yeah, hee <laughs> hee. All those patchwork seams fooled me. Better to know now, better to fix it now. This is the kind of thing I don't want to have to come back and fix just because it's kind of annoying. All right. That's the front. This is the back. And I will stick it in there because my labels are actually a little scratchy. I could fake it. I've done that. I've had to do that before when I've forgotten it completely, huh? So um, you can do this with multiple rows as well. Like say you want, um, say it's a wide waistband. Yeah, I mean, cause you could stitch straight down the middle if you like as well. Thanks, Eliza. Um, if you can, you can stitch down the middle as well. Just make sure that all, everything is kosher and, with your pants or kosher, is that the right word? No. Yeah, Lisa, crazy pants. <laughs> um, 
just make sure because you don't want to have to take that out like I feel like these could have more even more you know they're they're fine they're actually really good they're, they're gonna be great but um what I'm trying to say is if you want to stitch down in the middle say you have a wider elastic and you want that look just make sure that's not going to stretch out your elastic at all you know okay this is the back Don't mind this noob. I just finished Lisa and then I realized I put the label after all of my coaching, I put the label in the wrong spot. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I tried them on off camera a little bit just to see if, they, if the um, waistband was in the right spot or the length of the rise was good before I put my elastic in there. I don't have much seam allowance on this label too, but I got it up there. there we go. That's my seam. Like it never happened. You can really hide your stitching in the gathers, thankfully. Where's the, oh, there it is. I know right where my machine likes to leave threads. I'm gonna stitch this one from the right side so I get my um, stitches lined up, especially since it is the front. I will most likely wear something over the waistband, but you know. There we go. I thought someone walked in. Look of terror on my face. I'm the only one here on Saturdays. All right, so doing the pockets, like I was saying, um, I would, you know, if you want inseam pockets, I did those on the dress number two. Um, so you can watch that video that we did on Thursday and just fast forward it to that point. Um, and if you want patch pockets, definitely do it before you um, put your pants together. But it is a little tricky to figure out like where you want them. So, you know, do your best. But I could see like, I, I'm gonna probably add something. It's harder to put them on now, but I think I'll add something because I typically will walk upstairs in my house with a glass of water, a bowl of watermelon, and I need a place for my glasses on my phone, you know? So. Yeah, those are cute. Oh, let me show you what I made. So, I told you guys I had to re-photograph my wallaby, and I this was the fabric I picked. It turned out pretty good. And it, and it photographed pretty good. I did this modern geometric um, digital print from Stone Mountain. So this is the next pattern that'll be out. This wallaby, all canvas, no plastic. And then um, I decided to do the pocket bucket. This was some one that people really wanted me to make a pattern of, but it is no joke to sew this thing. Um, and I just didn't think people would really want to have to sew it. But it's got seven pockets around the outside. There's three, two, and then one on each end. And usually in the end days, we made these pockets out of vinyl. So you could see what was in them and it saved some money on fabric. But I'm going to do a vinyl free version and uh, this version. So pocket bucket, it's very stiff. <laughs> But I love this thing, like going between the car and the house, you know, you can put your lunch inside here, <laughs> glasses, you know, phone. Uh, I would put my um, camera when it was a small little camera. Um, I would put all the things I needed for the day and I would, you know, that would be how I would get to and from work. So, <laughs> or you could, I have one that has just art supplies in it. I know knitters like to use them as a knitting bag, but I never used it as a knitting bag. It was too, um, I didn't, it would just, nah, it just didn't work for me. My projects were always sweater sized, you know. I people, I also hear people use those on the couch for all the remotes. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, that works too. Well, cool. I'm so glad all my nervousness on my Patrick pants. I'll have my photographer, AKA Cricket, try and take some pictures of me wearing them. That should be interesting out in my garden wearing Patrick pants. 
Um, and next week we're sewing the Fairfield button up shirt. I can show you a picture of it by Thread Theory Designs, a menswear shirt. Um, this one? Yep, that's it. So you see this menswear, um, this dude here. I love that it's like this rumpled shirt, you know, like he's lived in that shirt a lot for the cover photo of that pattern. Um, I love, I love that. It just makes it look legit like, oh, this person loves this pattern, you know. Um, I've made it a couple times for my husband. He, he likes it a lot. So I'll be making a short sleeve version, but I'm going to do a um, sleeve placket, just a demo. Like, I'm not an expert, but I will do, I'll sew a sleeve placket, placket in a cuff on a um, demo version of it. So if anyone wants to do the long sleeve version, you could. So that'll be there. And yeah, it should be fun. We're going to cut them on Wednesday, cut it on Wednesday. I don't have to do any mods except shorten it a little bit. And then we'll sew part one on Thursday and part two on Saturday. Yeah, Derek, it's a good one. And, and my husband made it a point. He said, you know, I really like this shirt. And, you know, it was probably a good fabric choice, too. I think that makes a big difference. Whereas, like, I made the Jutland pants for him. They turned out really great, but, and he like he says he likes them, but he, I've seen him wear them like twice. I think they're just, they're too biggie, baggy through the butt for him. Cool, Terry. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, he said, he goes, I like this shirt. Like I, I love how it feels when I put it on. It fits really great. And, um, he says he, he feels like it's very no fuss. Like he just puts it on. So uh, that's the best kind of compliment for any piece of clothing right the one that you just can put on and it works great and i made his out of that seven berry fabric have you guys seen that seven berry fabric remember because i thought it was yarn dyed and it wasn't it was printed navy blue so i made it a year ago if you guys want to see that I've, I've already made it once um navy blue it looks like an ecot but it's not it's a japanese printed fabric those seven berry fabrics are really nice they're kind of um uh, not, not heavy weight, but they're heavier than a quilting cotton. They're very thready. They're, they're, they're good. They're good stuff. I really like it. For a print, it's amazing how nice those are. Printed, usually I just think of as like quilting cottons and things like that. It looks like a yarn dye, and I'm such a big fan of those, so. Yeah, right, Derek? <laughs> totally. Yeah, I swear, that's what they should, we should start renaming things like that. Because she does have those kinds of, um, modifications possible for that pattern. The lockdown stomach. I don't think I can consider mine a lockdown stomach. It's more of a campfire. <laughs> campfire tragedy stomach. I don't know. I don't know if it's that either. It's a I'm going to turn 50 next year stomach. <laughs> that ice cream has been too good to me. <laughs> All right. Um... What else do I need to tell you? I think that's about it. So, um, I'm Sarah. Me, by the way, this is so so. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you do, subscribe. And um, I'm usually live Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. At the very least, Thursday, Saturday. Next month is my second year anniversary of streaming, and so we'll have some giveaways. And um, I'm, I think I'm going to have two, maybe two, free patterns for Patreon patrons. Um, I'm hoping I haven't even started them. I don't even know what they are yet, but I'm pretty determined to get you guys something. And then, um, I will hopefully have a couple of videos to upload, upload a while as well. Cool. That's awesome. Sydney. That's awesome. That makes it a lot easier so you can trust it. Right? Good. I'm glad. Yeah. That seemed a little bit like doubling it. That seemed like a lot. Um, and I know Cashmerette is pretty, um, solid on their sizing. It seems like what, from what I hear, what people say. So good. All right. Well, have a great weekend, you guys. I'll see you guys on Wednesday to cut the Fairfield. If you want to sew along, please do. Or even if you just want to cut out the collar or the sleeve and just sew that with me in practice, go for it. All right. I will, um, yeah, I'll see you guys Wednesday. And I hope you guys have a good weekend.